Hey, this is Professor Perez. In this video, we are going to convert proper fractions to decimals. But before we get started, we need to get out our student volunteer, Charlie. He better be ready to go. Hey, Charlie, are you ready? Let's get started right there. Nine over a hundred. How do we say this fraction correctly? It's nine hundredths. Now to convert the fraction to decimal, we're going to use a Kung Fu move. Watch. We simply count the number of zeros in our denominator. Notice we have two zeros. That means our decimal representation will have two decimal place values. Notice the rightmost place value is the hundredths place. How many hundredths do we have? Nine. And we use a zero right here as a placeholder. And how do you read that decimal correctly? Nine hundredths. Let's do another one here. 41 over 100. How do we say that fraction correctly? 41 hundredths. Again, we count the number of zeros in the denominator. We have two of them. Therefore, our decimal representation will have two decimal place values with our rightmost place value as the hundredths. How many hundredths do we have? 41. So that decimal is read 41 hundredths. Let's do another one. 3 over 1,000. That fraction is said correctly 3 one-thousandths. Notice that we count the zeros in the denominator. We have three of them. That means our decimal representation will have three decimal place values with our rightmost place value as the one thousandths place. How many one thousandths do we have? Three of them. And here we need two zeros for a placeholder. And how do you say that decimal correctly? Three one thousandths. Let's go to this one over here. 1,314 over 100,000. How do we say that fraction correctly? 1,314 hundred thousandths. If we count the number of zeros in the denominator, notice there's five of them. Therefore, our decimal representation will have five decimal place values with the rightmost place value as the hundred thousandths place. How many hundred thousandths do we have? 1,314. And we need one zero for a placeholder. And to say that decimal correctly, it's 1,314 hundred thousandths. Well, what about fractions that do not have denominators that are powers of 10? In those cases, we must divide the denominator into the numerator, perform the division. So here we have 3 fourths. We are going to divide 4 into a 3. 4 doesn't go into 3, so we put a 0 as a placeholder and add another 0. 4 goes into 30 7 times. 7 times 4 is 28. We subtract, we get a 2. Add another zero, bring it down. Four goes into 25 times, four times five is 20. We subtract, we get a remainder of zero. So we stop and we read our result. Three fourths is equivalent to 0 0.75, which is the fraction 75 hundredths. And if you reduce 75 hundredths to lowest terms, you will get the fraction three fourths. Let's try another one here, three eighths. Here we divide 8 into a 3. 8 does not go into 3, so we put a 0 as a placeholder, add a 0. 8 goes into 30 three times. 8 times 3 is 24. We subtract. That gives us a 6. Bring in another 0. Bring it down. 8 goes into 67 times because 8 times 7 is 56. We subtract. We get a 4. Let's add another 0. Bring it down. 8 goes into 45 times because 8 times 5 is 40, and we get a remainder of 0, so we stop. Therefore, the fraction 3 eighths can be written as a decimal 0 0.375. Now, that's 375 one-thousandths. And if you reduce 375 one-thousandths to lowest terms, you will, in fact, get the fraction 3 eighths. Realistically, when you change a fraction to a decimal, using this long division method, you will never get a remainder of zero. But a pattern will occur in your calculation. So let's do one of those. Here we have the fraction 1 sixth. Let's divide 6 into 1. 6 does not go into 1, so we put a 0 as a placeholder, bring in a 0. 6 goes into 10 1 times. 1 times 6 is 6. We subtract. 10 subtract 6 is 4. Let's bring in another zero, bring it down. 
6 goes into 40 six times because 6 times 6 is 36. We subtract, we get a remainder 4. So we add a 0. Bring it down. 6 goes into 46 times. 6 times 6 is 36. We get a remainder of 4. So, if we were to continue on, we would continuously get a remainder of 4. That means we stop and say 1 sixth can be represented by the decimal 0 0.1 with a bunch of sixes going on forever. Well, how do we represent a decimal like that? It goes on forever. It does not terminate. Well, that's where we use a little bar. So we write 0 0.16. Now, we don't leave it like that because that decimal represents 16 hundredths. This is not 16 hundredths. It's 0 0.1 with a bunch of sixes going on forever, so we put a bar above the six, and that's how we represent that decimal representation. So 1 six is 0 0.16 with that bar over the six. That's it for now. We'll see you again soon.